This short video covers a specific laboratory exercise, a mini lab exercise called dropper poppers. A dropper popper is this toy. I'll thoroughly explain what it does in just a moment. This video is intended for those of you that are absent from class while this mini lab is done in class. This then will allow you to, for example, use the data that I take here to then complete the handouts for this mini lab on your own. You'll need to download, by the way, the mini lab exercise from the folder called handouts on Schoology and then under the subfolder called work and energy. Okay, so the dropper popper itself kind of looks like a racquetball that's been cut in half, and then what I'm gonna do is fold it like so, and then when I do, it's like compressing a spring. So then therefore, I give it some spring potential energy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it here above the floor. I'm gonna do so at a height of one meter. I have a meter stick here, for example, that is taped to the side of my desk to make a couple of measurements. So then right here, it has a mix, if you will, of both gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. And now I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. When I do, it pops and it's like releasing a spring. And then when I do, notice that it rises to a greater height here that I dropped it from. So then therefore, right here, it has gravitational potential energy only. So you then have a mix of, for example, gravitational and spring potential energy here, which then transforms into all gravitational potential energy here. And now I'm gonna make a simple measurement here of this height by using my meter stick. And then when I do, the height right here is about 175 centimeters. That's 1.75 meters. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and redirect my phone here to the board, so let me go ahead and do so. So bear with me here as I do that. Like this. Okay, and now let me go ahead and begin to write down the data that is necessary to complete this lab exercise. Start to put this information into the handouts called mini lab dropper poppers. Okay, first of all, I measured the mass of the dropper, dropper popper earlier. It's about 20 grams. However, I'm gonna write that in terms of kilograms. That's 0 0.02 kilograms. And then I have the two heights here that I mentioned. The first height that I dropped the popper from, that's referred to as H1, that was one meter. And then the height that I caught that was 175 centimeters, that's 1.75 meters like so. Okay, now here's the basic theory behind the exercise. Okay, let's say it right here, for example, is the popper when I drop it from this height H1 above the floor, and I release it from rest when I do. And then it pops and rises to this greater height here where I catch it, for example, at its maximum height. So then therefore, for an instant, its speed is equal to zero at that point. And then right here is the height H2 that I measure. Okay, now we're gonna ignore friction with the floor, and we're also gonna ignore air resistance. So then therefore, conservation of energy applies to this situation, and I then begin to write the conservation of energy equation in the following way. Okay, so zero equals delta K plus delta U for gravity plus delta U for the spring, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in my terms. So when I do, first of all, the change in kinetic energy, both the final and initial kinetic energies are zero, so zero minus zero for the first term. And then change in gravitational potential energy, my final gravitational potential energy is up here with the height h2. And then minus the initial gravitational potential energy here at the height h1, like so. And then we have change in spring potential energy. At the end of the process, the popper has already popped, so then therefore it has no spring potential energy. But then initially, when I have folded it and I've placed it here, it does have spring potential energy, which I'm gonna write now as, let me do it here, one half kx squared, like so. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out everything in this expression except for the spring constant and then use the information to calculate the spring constant. Here's how I'm gonna algebraically manipulate the equation, however. I'm gonna go ahead and solve it for this term here, the one half kx squared. So let me go ahead and take this expression here and move it to the other side. I'll throw all of the zeros away as I do. and therefore my equation here then becomes the following. Okay, now using the data that I have obtained thus far, this will allow you to work up to step six in the lab packet. When you get to step six, that's this expression here. 
what you then do is plug in all of these numbers that you've calculated earlier, and the measurements, of course, of H1 and H2 and the mass M, and you then solve then this expression here and obtain a number for 1 half kx squared. So 1 half kx squared is going to equal then some number in terms of joules. That's basically step six. Okay, and now we get to step seven, and in step seven you're going to make a measurement, or I'm going to make a measurement here rather, for the displacement x of the popper when it's been folded like so. So here's then how I'm going to measure x. So this is step seven. Okay, here's the popper like so before I fold it, and then this is what the popper looks like after I fold it, like so. We're going to consider this distance here plus this distance here, that total distance, is going to be the distance x. I've measured that distance earlier by using a ruler. It's about four and a half centimeters, so the value of x is 0 0.045 meters. That's what step seven is. Okay, and then the last step, step eight, is just to calculate the spring constant. So let me jump back to this expression here, where you have one half kx squared is equal to some number in terms of joules. What you do at this point, very simply, is just plug in the value of x here, like so, and then just solve for the spring constant, k. Okay. So the last step is just a little bit of manipulation. So just solve for k. After plugging in value of x here that I've measured. The sources of error, as I mentioned earlier, are friction and air resistance, but also a little bit of uncertainty in measuring the value of H2 when they caught the popper when it reached its maximum height. So once you've completed the mini lab, make sure that you submit it to the, uh, to the link on Schoology. And then if you would like at lunch sometime after you return to school, you can then come by and take a look at one of these poppers.